There are plenty of ways to leverage Google for your business and attract a ton of real estate leads. Some ways involve the organic path, in other words, the free path, which tends to take a little bit longer. And then some ways take the paid path, which is an accelerator and a multiplier in what we're looking at today. Because today we'll look at how to generate real estate leads using Google Ads. Hey, it's Jaime. If we're just meeting, welcome to the channel that brings actionable content to grow your business through online marketing. So if that sounds beneficial, consider subscribing. Today's video is action packed, so don't miss it. We have to get through a lot of different things, but just understand that the reward is definitely worth it. So we're gonna understand the opportunity real quickly and then we're gonna go over to Google Ads and design everything out. So right off the bat, what is the opportunity? We're talking about Google Ads, we're talking about showing up when people need us. So let's just type in something that somebody would go to the Google search engine and type. Let's just say best real estate, if I can spell real estate agent near me. Okay, and then it's gonna come up with some results. So you see Dave Ramsey's advertising his program. You see Fast Expert, don't necessarily know who that is. That's a new one. You see Home Light, they have a very similar program to Dave Ramsey. Then say Better Realtors, very much the same thing as Ramsey. So then you have the properties around. Then at the very bottom, you're gonna have some other opportunities. You're gonna see three more. And then when you go to the second page, you're gonna see some more opportunities. So dependent on how competitive your keywords are, you're gonna have four advertisements at the top of the search and then three at the bottom of the search. So you're gonna have seven on the front page, seven on the next page and on and on until the, until the supply is met or the demand is met. Now, in order to show up here, you have to create a Google Ads account. So we're not gonna actually go through and create the account because that would make this video a little bit longer than it needs to be but just understand this is where you would need to go to launch your campaigns. And to launch them, it's super, super simple, but I want to give you two very highly encouraged, um, very highly converting items to get out of the way from the get-go. Now, a lot of people do not set this up and they're shooting themselves in the foot. They're doing themselves a huge disservice by not getting these things done. Now, the first thing is creating a conversion. So conversion is, a way for you to track the results, a way for you to track if, if a certain campaign is actually converting for you. So you are, you are gonna be running multiple campaigns, ideally split testing. If you follow any of my other videos, that's what I highly encourage you to do regardless of the marketing platform. And it's gonna be very advantageous to do these split tests and know which one of those campaigns is actually converting. So by you creating a conversion, it's gonna help you it's gonna help you in that regard. It's gonna help you track the results. It's gonna help you track the people that actually became leads for you. Now, the second thing that you need to do is create a retargeting audience. And that's something that we're gonna get through. And then lastly, we're gonna actually launch the campaign. So again, there's quite a few things that we need to accomplish in this video and I'm being super ambitious, including all of that right here. Each one of those could be their very own video, but I have faith in you. I've trust in you that you're gonna get this done so we're gonna get started. Let's go to tools and settings and create that conversion that I was alluding to. We're gonna hit conversions, we're gonna go to the plus button, and then we're gonna go to website. So you can see that you can track different conversions, but let's read the let's read what it says. Conversion tracking is critical to success to successful online marketing. It lets you see what people do, the conversion actions they take after seeing your ad. You set up one conversion action at a time, but you can track multiple conversions actions at once. All right, so that kind of told us what it was about, but stick to that first um, that first definition that I gave you, which is really tracking what is successful. All right, so you see conversions, app, phone calls, import. So don't worry about these others. We're gonna worry about websites at the moment. And we're gonna select that it is a, it is a sign up, uh, submit lead, lead form. So conversion name, we're gonna go with test, lead form and then we're going to put right there so i'm going to that's what i'm going to call it the lead form test lead form i'll copy that just in case all right you can name it whatever you want but just remember what you titled it because you're going to come back to that and claim that conversion when you start creating your campaigns all right so value use the same value for each conversion use different values for each conversion use a value for this conversion action so we're going to use the same value for each conversion 
you can leave one dollar a hundred dollars whatever it is it's this is um this is much simpler if you have in e-commerce and know exactly how much you're selling or a service that you know how much you're selling but since you are in real estate you can play the averages of about how much it uh, how much revenue you actually get per lead if you have done that that math already so right here how many conversions to count per click or iteration recommended for purchases because every purchase is valuable or once recommended for leads which is what we are doing this means that it doesn't matter how many times they submit their contact information they still only count as one lead for us if we would go over here then if they continue to submit their information for whatever reason we don't want to count every single one because it's the same information all right so the click through conversion window is going to be 30 days that is fine view through conversion window one day that's fine include conversions yes attribution model last click fantastic create hey it's me i know that you're enjoying this google ads tutorial so i'll let you get back to it in a couple of seconds i just wanted to share with you that i was watching netflix the other day and i found this incredible new show it's called like city and to get to it all you have to do is go down to the bottom of this video and smash that like button for me all right so here's the fun part if you have a if you have the google tag manager many many people won't many people won't so don't be confused by that you don't need that but if you do you can actually set this up here or start from the google tag manager and bring it back here or um the google analytics and bring back the conversion but we're not going to do that um email attack so email it to your webmaster many of you w will benefit from this that if it's either your it person or the company that is doing your website the webmaster whoever's doing that you can just email them the tag which is going to be a code it's very similar to the facebook pixel so you don't need to worry about that all that much or install the tag yourself this is very simple to do which we're actually going to do right now so you see how simple it is so we're going to install the tag ourselves and i'm going to get to let's just say let's go to a landing page let me go to click funnels real quick now to install the tag you do need a little bit of access to the code on your website not much but you still need it so check this out this is click funnels if you want to try out their system i have a affiliate link down below if you want to try them out if not there are other landing pages many other landing page generators out there that you can check out or have a traditional website as well what's important is that you're tracking these conversions so we're going to go to settings and i'll show you how to create this we're creating that conversion you're going to go to the head tracking code and this one might already have it no perfect so we're going to come back here we're going to copy that and then we're going to paste that and we're going to make sure that we save that save all right so what we've just done is we've created uh we've installed the global site tag which is going to be over the entire funnel that's why we went to the settings and it's over the funnel right now regardless if this had, this had 10 pages five pages two pages one page it's there now what we're going to do is the event snippet the event snippet works with the global site to track actions that should be counted as conversions so goes back to measuring what has actually converted which for us is a lead so every time we get a lead we want to make sure that we're able to track that in order to do that is we're going to take this code right here we're going to go back to the landing page or the sales funnel we're going to go to the thank you thank you uh page we're going to edit the page here and then we're going to go to settings we're going to do tracking code and look there was one already so let me just replace that boom there you go so you've just installed the tracking code you're going to save and we're going to go back and let's pause a quick second just so you understand what we just did what we did was we installed the global site tag for the entire landing page so that means it it's on both of these and what we did with the event code was place it just on the thank you page now you may be wondering well jaime why did you do that well the reason being is because if somebody hits my landing page that means that they gave me their information on the front end so you can't upload this thank you page you won't show up here unless you gave me your information back here does that make sense so that is why we created that conversion now i know we haven't even started the the campaign so i told you this was going to be a little bit longer but trust me this is something that is super valuable as soon as you get this right you're going to be able to make important decisions in your business don't skip out on this i know it's easy to just have those glassy eyes and just be done with it but no don't do that that's costing you money 
We're going to go next. Boom, you're done. All right, now, now that we've done that, we are going to create a retargeting ad, a retargeting audience. So we're going to go over here. We're going to go to Audience Manager. We're going to go right here. We're going to go to Website Visitors. And what you're going to see is the audience name. Let's name it whatever we uh, whatever we were calling it. Oh, I copied that, didn't I? Uh, I think it was lead form opt-in test. I put something like that. It's probably not right. Okay, so select the type of visitors from which you'd like to create an audience. So visitors of a page, visitors of a page who has visited another page, visitors of a page who did not visit another page. So you're able to retarget based off of that. This is super cool. Don't overcomplicate it. I want you to just start with the fundamentals and then gradually get into something a bit more more um, targeted because right now this would be a, this would make a lot more sense if you had a bit more experience, but also if you had a larger budget. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and say go with visitors of a page and leave it like that for now because I don't want you to overcomplicate things. All right, include people that visited a page with the following rules match any rule group so page url contains check that out referral url event so we're just going to stay with page url contains equals starts with ends with does not contain does not equal so it's a lot of it seems like a lot of algebra right it seems like a lot of math going on so don't worry about that what we're going to do is we're going to say contains and then we're going to go back here and we're going to go to the landing page or the sales funnel, the front end where people are going to go. And I believe this entire URL shows up. No, it ends at opt-in. So that's sometimes I get confused with that. So this little part right here that changes. I know you can't see it because of the screen recording of where I have it capped, but trust me, it just goes through opt-in. So what we're going to do is come back here. And we're going to go to that. All right. Doesn't have any members. Try and adjust your rules and check the audience size. This will go away in a couple of minutes as I start opening up other browsers and force the um, force the landing page to show up. So we've already installed the global site tag. We are good to go. We have the code on the back end. So don't worry about this all that much. All right. Now, what I do want you to check out is once you have traffic, I do want you to come back here and see if there's anything that went a little bit wrong so you can come back and adjust it. But based off of everything that you've seen here, there's no reason for you to get this. Um, there's no reason for this not to work correctly. So right now we just haven't driven any traffic to it because we just installed the global site tag. So we're good. Prefill options, prefill list with people from the past 30 days. So you can see here, you can start with an empty list or prefill a list for the past 30 days. Well, we just installed it. So either one's going to work for us. But if you already have your, um, your tag already on your website, then chances are that you're already getting traffic. So prefilling for 30 days is a great head start for you. People stay on the number, uh, stay the number of days. So basically how long do you want people to stay on this page? You can go back up to 540 days. So we're just going to max it out. Now it won't capture 540 days because we just installed it, but going forward 540 days now, we're going to be reaping the rewards of what we did today. All right. And then the description, you can put some, a description if you would want, I'm not going to. All right. So we've created that. Now let's go back and create the ad. Now, I know we've just done a lot of things and we're not even to creating the ad, but as a reminder, as I mentioned at the beginning, I was being very ambitious with this and I trust you are going to take the time and go through it. If there's even any questions, please be sure to comment down below, but you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot. So let's keep going. We're going to go to new campaign. We're going to go to campaign without a goals guidance. We're going to go to search. And we're going to go to website visitors. You can put your website here. I'm not going to, but the only thing that this is going to do is it's going to come back to us in about the second step where it asks, uh, uh, where it's going to take all of the words on your website and it's going to give you suggestions on keywords. So if it's a real estate website, which most of the audience is going to have that, then it's going to take some words from your website and suggest them to you as keywords to target. So we're not going to worry about that. 
We're going to continue. Name, it, name the campaign, whatever you want to name it. Just remember that you want um, you want to remember what you're targeting and you want to remember what settings you use. So be as descriptive as you can with the campaign so you don't get confused. As far as networks, people get confused that when they see search, they think that, oh, that's the search, um, that's the search engine. That's what we just typed in. Well, it's not. Ads can appear near Google search results and other Google sites. So it's not necessarily just Google. So I like to exclude that. So people know, so I know that this is basically on Google. This is on Google. This isn't on their network or on partner sites. All right. So you can go to show more settings. You can start and end URL options. We're not going to worry about that right now. Just uh, I'll let you venture into that. I want to keep things moving rather quickly. And since Fort Worth is here already, we're going to leave Fort Worth. That's going to be fine for us. English is good. The audiences. So check this out. We're going to go to browse so you see the differences, who they are, demographics. So based off of the demographics, now on Facebook, demographics has gone all, all away. So you have to select the special ad audience, but here you don't have to. You can still target based off of who they are. So certain characteristics from parental status, marital status, education, home ownership status. Hello, we have homeowners. We have renters. How powerful is that? That is cool. So what we're going to do is let's just go with homeowners. Um, now let's go with renters. Let's go with actually, since we're getting buyers, we're not going to worry about that right now. I just want you to see that that's there, what their interests are and habits are. So affinity, what they're normally consuming, what they're actively researching or planning. So let's just say they had a little break in pattern. They're typically looking at bike informa biking information, hiking and all that fun stuff. And then they start suddenly searching on U-Haul sites, on um, other sites that have to do with moving. Well, that's a little bit different. That's a break from what they were typically searching. So that is in market, what they're actively researching or planning. So somebody that is actively, um, let's just say, was their affinity with just normal behavior um, that has to do with work. And then suddenly they're um, checking out Paris. They're checking out uh, what to do in Paris, activities in Paris, blah, blah, blah. And then what happens is the advertisers, i.e. you now, you have the ability to surround that person with Paris stuff. Now, I know this is realistic, but just illustrating to you what is happening there. And this is where the advertisers get that ability to do it. And then how they are interacted with your business. So remember that audience that we created the second step, we did the conversion, then we created the audience. So you click there and then you go to website visitors and then you find the one that you did, which is right here. That's retargeting. That's the retargeting. So on this one, um, I'm not, we're actually selected. Just pretend that this is actually the retargeting campaign, but look at the power, look at the power of what you have in front of you. You have the ability to retarget people just like you do on Facebook. And I don't want you to miss this because it is very difficult to advertise to a cold audience, it is significantly easier to advertise to a warm audience, which effectively that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. That when you created that custom audience, you're creating that audience. So that's a warm audience. So I don't want you to miss it. So as a reminder, the conversion is going to show you how many opt-ins are coming in based off of the campaign. And then over here, how they interacted with your business, it's that recycling or that retargeting of your message and campaign. So combined audiences, you combine different attributions or different aspects of the of this above. We're not going to work on that right now, but we'll leave that there so we don't want to so we don't work too hard, but just know that's what's happening. All right? All right, so budget, let's just say 50 bucks. Um conversion, so what do you want to focus on? So conversions. You see conversions right there? which you let's see ba, 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 show settings conversions right here you can actually select the conversion that you want to target if you have multiple conversions it said it if you remember at the beginning of the conversions talk it said that you can only create one um, individually but you can have multiple so you can only create one at one time but you can have multiple so this is where you get to select which one you want you select the conversions the one that we just created that's the one that you want to optimize for. That's the one that you want to track. 
So as you can see here, what do you want to focus on? Well, that's conversions. I want to focus on people that actually gave me their information or became a lead. And that's what's happening here. So choose conversion actions for the campaign, the uh, ad schedule all day, ad rotation, best performing, ad extensions. These are very powerful. So use them. Site link extensions is basically another hyperlink to your ad. Call out extensions are highlighting certain aspects of your business that you want people to see. And then call extensions uh, is your phone number. We're not going to go through and create every single one of those, but just know that when you drop down, you have the ability to create them um, and add them to your campaign. We're not going to do that right now. Just know that they're there. And then some different elements or different extensions that continue to be added to Google ads. So check those out at your leisure. We're going to save and continue. All right, so these are the keywords. Now remember at the beginning of the ad creation phase, we had enter your product or service, okay? Now, had I put the website, it would have shown me, shown me some keywords. Now I have the ability to type in keywords. Now I don't wanna confuse the issue because I kind of already, yes, I kind of, I kind of already did. Back uh, prior to the screen, I selected that audience that we created, that audience that we, um, the custom audience that said um, lead form submitted YouTube. That is actually, that's technically my second ad. That is some, an ad that I'm going to run in the back of this one. So meaning, had I not selected that little feature, had I not selected that audience, I would actually be putting my keywords here. So, I'm going to run an anchor ad, which is what I'm calling this right now. So I'm going to run my anchor ad with certain keywords that people that are likely to buy or sell a home are going to select. In our example, we're in Fort Worth and we're looking for buyers. So we would put best real estate agent near me, how to buy a house. Um, you can actually put them right here and get some suggestions. Let's see, buy a house. For sale by owner, property for sale, MLS listings, real estate for sale, houses to buy. We're best real estate agent. Best estate agents, top 10 real estate companies, largest real estate companies, all that stuff. So I would put these keywords here and I would run that campaign first. Now, again, I, I'm kind of confusing the issue. So my apologies, I should not have selected that previous one with the audience but had i not selected that i would be putting all of those keywords right here so you see how to run that anchor ad because this anchor ad right here is going to be driving all of the traffic to your landing page and then this little custom audience that we created that had a zero remember when we created it and it gave us a little tan line that you had zero people that had visited that site because you had just installed the global site tag well that zero is going to turn into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a ton of people that are going to start seeing your ads later. All right. So just, um, just keep that in mind. I know I conflated two different things. I just get excited about this, but we're going to make the best of it. So I'm not going to go through and, and actually put the keywords here at this time, but just look down here at the keywords. So you see broad match, let's just say real estate agent. That's broad match. Anything that comes close to real estate agent in the search bar, it's a good possibility that your ad will show up if you have enough of a budget. That is broad match. Keyword, if you type in real estate agent, as long as that phrase is somewhere in your search, your ad has a potential of showing up. So best real estate agent in Fort Worth, well, real estate agent was in there, so chances are that it's gonna show up. Now, exact match. If you put brackets on them, <clears throat> that means I if it only needs to say this. I don't want anything after. I don't want anything before. I don't want anything in the middle. If this shows up, then I want well, I want my ad to show. Now, I keep saying there's a good possibility it shows up because it's an auction style system. Only because you select it does not mean that your ad is going to show. A lot of factors go into that. The quality of your ad. 
Meaning if people are clicking on your ad and then they immediately bounce out, that means that's telling uh, Google that that's a terrible ad or an ad that has, we don't want to serve up. So it's going to cost you a little bit more. Or if you run out of a budget, it's also going to tell you that as well. All right. So we're just going to save and continue. We're going to create the ad and I'm going to accelerate this because at this point it is, um, you're just going to look different. So you're going to put your URL right there. You're going to put a headline right here. So notice that each one of them is 30 characters. So you're going to put the URL and then best real estate agent in Fort Worth, um, buy house quickly, uh, trusted professional, whatever the case may be. Then you're going to put a phantom URL. So you're going to put what I like to put of the city that I'm advertising in. So I would put Fort Worth. Note that this is actually not a live link you don't have to have this link on your landing page or on your website this is just a display as you see it kind of right there that is just so people can see it but it's not a live link that goes to your website and then you're going to put a description of your services a description your value proposition of why people need to click on that ad and submit their contact information then you're going to have another description right here so another 90 characters to get that done don't worry about the tracking template at this time. That's good. That's a whole nother video, actually a series of videos that I'll probably do in the future, but not at this time. So that is all you need to do. I know it's, I know I say it, um, all you need to do, but it's really not that difficult. So if you bring things up, I know this is a longer video than you're used to, but create your conversions so you can track your results create your custom audiences so you can come back and retarget and then create your ad and start split testing see what's actually working for you so you can make adjustments based off of everything that you're seeing you're going to have higher conversions because you are able to track your conversions you are able to retarget to a warmer audience and you know how to split test from all the other content that you've seen on this channel so this is how you do real estate lead generation using Google ads. Well, now that we know how to generate real estate leads using Google ads, it's time to learn how to get real estate leads using YouTube ads. So I'll leave a video right here that's gonna help you do that. Also, if you found value today, please be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And of course, make it your best day yet.